And now we hear Stefan Wagner again. Yeah, good morning. And as you see, this is now coming nearly to an end. I look different today. And I'm, I'm not standing behind the desk because uh, when you do these closing things, it gets a little bit more personal. And you know that the people who are in this room, you won't see at least, if I think of the board, for maybe the next three or four or five months, who is not on the board, may see again in Helsinki in two years. So then you get a little bit, okay, how was it? Was it good? Was it not good? And when I was thinking this morning and yesterday evening about this conference and about conferences in general, three things came to my mind. And I think on conferences, and especially on IFS conferences, there are three things which are always there and which are important. And the first thing is you meet people, they are equal to you, they are the same. They're belonging to the same group, they're belonging to the same values, they're striving to go in the same direction as you. This is very positive. If you experience that after a long journey with planes and trains and ships and whatever was involved, and you finally arrive at your destination and then you meet people, you meet people like this, it's like coming home, even if you're far away. It gives you a sense of belonging and it gives you a feeling that you are not alone. That's very positive. This is what makes movements going, but this is not the thing where you learn that much. It's more the thing which gives you strength. The learning starts on these conferences often in a very different way. We are very diverse. We have a lot of different point of views, and you start learning most, or in, in a lot of times then, when somebody gives a presentation or gives a speech where you really have the feeling you should jump out of your skin and stop this. Yeah, you get the feeling, what the hell is this person saying? That can't be true, that can't be. And this is where thinking starts. The important thing is, when you not talk after this, when you not think after this, then it becomes black. Then it becomes an enemy. If you start talking, if you start listening, if you start thinking, then the second event, when there are things said you don't like, that starts you changing. And this is what is always necessary in life, because there's one thing life does, it changes. And then there comes the third thing, and the third thing is a little bit like Christmas. That means somebody is saying something, and you think, God to hell, what is this? I've never seen that before. This is great. I love it. Maybe I could do it. Maybe I could do it the same way. And then you start to learn in a different way. There's two ways. The one where you get angry and the one where you get very astonished. They're belonging to the same area where on the basis of belonging, you can develop and you can go on and you can develop new things. And this third thing is especially often happening on IFS conferences because with our different cultures, with the different countries we come from, there is a lot of things which are different than in the countries where one is coming from. And these different things enable them to see, hey, they're doing it other than me. That may be a possibility we can learn from. And that's great, and I think this is one of the very strengths of the movement. Now, that's about us. Penty mentioned that the way and the times before us and the future before us may be having dark spots. And I can understand that if I look in the world, there are dark clouds on the sky. And I will have a look at three spots where I think we as a movement have an obligation to do work. The first thing is very old and has always been with us. This is the thing between rich and poor. And the point is, in the developed countries, it has become more complicated. The old way, it was that way that you just had to say to the rich, give to the poor, they cannot survive. That, in a lot of countries in Europe and in North America, is no longer totally true. The poor can survive, but badly, and totally different than the rich. 
So we have to be much more careful the way we are addressing this issue or we feeding the wolves. Because there's other people who say, I have nothing, not, I have nothing, not enough. I need to get something from the state. And then they come to these easy solutions we experience all over the Northern Hemisphere. Keep the foreigners out and do the distribution under our people, then everybody has enough. So to fight this opening gap between the rich and the poor has become more complicated and has to become different than it was before. And I think neighborhood centers are fantastic places to address that on a local level because you can get people together, you can try to develop resources, you can try to give people who had disadvantages the possibility to develop and change their, um, their, their situation of living. And you can also talk to the rich people and make clear in your society, and that also can make aggressive attacks um, at least in the media, where you make clear if somebody is that damn rich and he gives nothing, he is really, yeah, maybe damned, I don't know. Yeah, but uh, he is somebody, somebody maybe nobody should talk about or so. So we have to become in this field maybe more aggressive, but we also have the possibility to do it on the local level, and that's very important because as long as we just addressing governments, nothing happens. Governments have their own agendas, they have a lot of problems, and they have then these people who are in them who are involved in power keeping. And um, so we can do that, what well, we did that for 100 years. On the local level, we can change things. We can do things because it's our level, it's our environment, and there is where change starts. Now, the second thing I like to mention is this wonderful blue sky and this wonderful sun you experienced in the last uh, week here in Berlin. And as you can see, bad things can have a nice face, face, because what you experienced here was global warming. It was much too warm. It was the wonderful catastrophe of global warming. And that means we have to address in our work environmental issues. That means we have to think, how is housing built? How is public transport organized? What cars do we use? And we have to discuss that in our societies. We may also have to think, how is farming done? Is it really necessary that very, very cheap goods are on the market which destroy the planet in big farm, in, in, in big farm industries where there is more uh, ecological negative gas produced than in the factories? So, also, here, we have the possibility on the local level to give inputs in all of these areas and to initiate change. And the last one may be the most scariest one. And what I've seen in the last four years, I didn't think that I would see that in my life. I saw people crucified, I saw beheadings, I saw a lot of things I thought they were belonging to the Middle Ages. So it's the question of war and peace. And here, the global answers are even more complicated than a single person can give. Because it's not the old answers we were giving, and there were basically always two factions fighting. And the one said, call to the arms, fight them. And the other said, break all arms, be peaceful. I've learned in my country, if you're facing the Nazi German Empire and you have no arms, you're not very good off. They won't be very nice to you if you're peaceful. The same is for some of the fractions we're now facing in the world, and we also see the specter, the, the specter of religious wars, which I thought is something of the Middle Ages, and maybe the Middle Ages have not stopped. But if I look on the local level, there's something very interesting to be seen. If you look at all these conflicts, at the end, they come down to a very simple thing, them and us. They are them, and we are us, and we are against them. And that's something we know. We all belong to groups. And because we belong to groups, we know where are we belonging and who is not belonging to us. And this is on the local level where we can learn to make peace, where we can develop the tools. How do I talk with a group I don't like very much? How do I work with a group I may really think they are mad or something bad or so? So how do I make peace? 
And there, on the local level, we have a lot of tools to maybe do the groundwork that then someday in the future, on the global level, we really have to get rid of the arms because I think we now have weapons. They are so tremendously destructive that it is just threatening. So, to the end, I want to mention two, three qualities, I think, which are always with the people working in the neighborhood centers, which can help us in this work. And the first I want to mention is endurance. And that means keep going. Even if you're tired, wake up the next morning, stand up, keep going, and don't let me push back. And if the things you're trying to change push you back, make a side step, let them pass, take your breath, and go again. And I think that is something which really is a hard quality of the Salomon movement, this endurance, this will to go on, and this will to change things. So, um, the second one I want to mention is coolness. And I think this is something very important. A lot of people try to initiate change which is good for them and not for all by just heating up the discussions, making things looking dangerous, making things looking dark. And the most important thing is not to panic, keep cool, keep going, keep your forces together and work hard. And so I wish us that we keep this coolness, especially when, he, when I see the threats we are facing in the next six to 12 months on the Northern Hemisphere. And the last one I want to mention is passion. If you want to change, you have to burn for it. You have to have the willingness to throw yourself in the front line and fight for it and go for it and be an example that people are willing to follow you. And we always had great leaders as Jane Adams and Michael Scissor. And I put them together in one sentence because I learned a lot from Michael. When I was going to the door and saw what he was doing there, I couldn't believe what you can do in social work. And it inspired me for the work I did in Germany. And so there is the circle closing. What we can learn and what keeps us going is our diversity and our will to work together. So, now, I will say, and I hope I see you all back in Helsinki, don't leave the room, because now we have some very small things, they're always happening at the end of the conferences, and you have to go through them, and later on you get a theater play, so that there also is some smile after uh, all this talking. Renate. <laughs>